since Hurricane Melissa hit Jamaica, there has been talk online that the government or some secret group created it. So let's stop for a second and actually look at the science and also use some deductive reasoning to show why this is extremely unlikely. So let's start simple. What does the science actually say about man-made hurricanes? The main idea floating around is that hurricanes can be created or steered using things like harp, cloud seeding, or some secret weather control program. These theories always blow up after a big storm, especially when people are scared, hurting, or searching for answers. But here's the reality from what I've gathered. HARP is a research facility that studies the ionosphere and radio waves, which is way too high up in the atmosphere to influence hurricanes. Hurricanes form in the troposphere, far below where HARP operates. Cloud seeding can sometimes help squeeze a little extra rain out of a cloud in a small area, but create, steer, or strengthen a hurricane? Not even close. Hurricanes are massive, powerful systems powered by warm seawater, and hurricanes themselves form naturally when the sea is warm, the air is humid and unstable, and the wind shear is low. That's it. Warm water plus physics. Climate change is making hurricanes stronger. That's measurable. But there is no scientific evidence that any government or organization has the technology to create or control something as huge and chaotic as a hurricane. That's a short version of what the literature actually says. So everything I just said in the previous segment lines up with what I already know based on nearly 20 years of studying earth science. I wanted to be a meteorologist when I was a child, but I eventually chose geology. I worked as a geologist in the mining sector in Jamaica for several years and now at the PhD level I am focusing on water resources. So my journey has exposed me to weather, climate, geology, and how these systems interact. So let me be the first to say this. Science will humble you. I've been proven wrong by scientists inside and outside of my field. I've been proven wrong by my own data. That's normal. It's part of the scientific method. You start with a hypothesis, you test it, you collect data, you go into the field and sometimes you find out your original idea wasn't correct and that's fine. So I'm always open to learning and being corrected by people with more expertise. But based on everything I've studied and everything presented by the experts with far more experience than I have, a lot of the things circulated online are honestly just widely inaccurate. A hurricane is not one storm. It's a complex system, an entire collection of thunderstorms feeding off warm water and interacting with things like high pressure areas, low pressure troughs, and wind shear. So when people say a hurricane is man-made, think about what that actually means. You'd have to Firstly, create a massive complex system driven by heat from the sea or ocean. Keep it alive as long across long distances while it's being acted upon by wind shear and um, other systems. And then steer it with almost pinpoint accuracy across hundreds or even thousands of kilometers. This isn't something, the same thing like steering a drone, a missile, or a plane. 
A hurricane is a chaotic system of thunderstorms with high energy, moisture, and heat. In fact, just to illustrate the supernatural power of Hurricane Melissa, the special plane deployed by the hurricane hunters to monitor conditions inside the system and get data had to retreat, which is reportedly, it reportedly doesn't happen very often as these planes are designed for those kinds of intense conditions. To me, the idea of a man-made hurricane is extremely far-fetched. But as I said, I'm open to credible evidence if it ever appears. So let's talk specifically about Hurricane Melissa now. Back in my undergrad days, I took a couple of climatology courses as part of my geography minor. From that, and from following weather over the years, I know hurricanes are shaped by several major forces. Steering currents, high pressure systems like the Azores or Bermuda Highs, uh, warm ocean water, wind shear, and the Coriolis effect. Melissa followed similar conditions. It started as a tropical wave off the coast of West Africa around October 16. It crossed the Atlantic, went through the Windward Islands, entered the Caribbean, slowed down for about two days, and eventually organized into Tropical Storm Melissa on, on, on October 21st. Weak steering currents and moderate wind shear kept it messy for a few days, but from October 25th to 27th, it rapidly intensified into a Category 5 hurricane before making landfall in Jamaica on October 28th. Eventually, it went on to Cuba, the Bahamas, and before it dissipated as an extra tropical system somewhere in the North Atlantic. Now pause with me. The straight line distance from West Africa to Jamaica is about 6,600 miles or 10,000 kilometers. So if someone claims Melissa was directed by humans at Jamaica, that would mean a group of people supposedly controlled a tropical wave for 10,000 kilometers from 10,000 kilometers away kept it alive across the whole Atlantic dodged all the systems that could weaken or destroy it and then land it right on a specific part of Jamaica when you really think about that it sounds absolutely ridiculous and I say that in the kindest way possible some people also asked why did Melissa slow down to walk in pace for two days. Why did it suddenly turn north? Storms stall all the time. Slow movers are not new. In Melissa's case, it was being influenced by two weak high pressure areas, one to the east, one to the west. Hurricane expert Michael Lowry even posted a graphic showing this setup. Melissa was squeezed between these systems and forced to drift. If someone wants to argue that those high-pressure systems were also man-made, so now they're going to be saying people didn't just create the hurricane but also created the two other weather systems to guide the hurricane. And again, from thousands of miles away. At a certain point, rational thinking has to come into the equation. So forget about hurricanes for a moment. Outside of hurricane season, how many Jamaicans actually watch the weather forecast on a regular basis? Unless you're a fisherman listening for small craft warnings or some sailor or nautical professional or farmer or 
you're just interested in weather like me, most people don't check it daily. And why does this matter? This matters because meteorologists usually give a five-day forecast, maybe seven days if you check certain weather apps, they stretch it a little bit. But even with modern technology, the weather can't be accurate, accurately predicted a month from now, far less months in advance. Forecasts accuracy drops the farther ahead you go into the future. So think about this. If I wanted to create a hurricane and pinpoint a specific country or region for attack, I'd need months of planning. At least that's what I think. But how am I going to manipulate something that even the best meteorologists on Earth can predict with long-term precision? If we struggle to forecast the weather over long periods like months, how are we going to control it? The more we examine the weather manipulation idea, the more it falls apart. Again, if someone wants to present credible evidence to the contrary one day, I'm open to looking at it. I just strongly doubt that that day will come. Now, people are free to believe what they want, and social media has empowered persons everywhere to express their views and opinions. But here is my real concern with the government-controlled or organization-controlled weather narrative. It distracts from real, urgent issues, especially the climate crisis. Small island developing states like Jamaica and the Caribbean region by extension are among the most vulnerable. We are already feeling the impacts. Climate scientists like Professor Michael Taylor have been warning for years that hurricanes in particular will probably not only increase in frequency but also strength. 37 years ago, in September 1988, Jamaica was hit by Category 3 Hurricane Gilbert, which has become a fixture in Jamaican lore because of just how devastating it was on the landscape and lives. To think that Hurricane Melissa was a Category 5 and we should expect to experience more storms this intense is downright frightening. When people say hurricanes, droughts, floods, or wildfires are caused by secret technology instead of climate change, it empowers persons who deny the climate crisis playing out as we speak. It undermines the need for accountability. It weakens the push for climate action and mitigation. And that's dangerous for our country or region, or economy, or world, and our future. We need to be very careful not to let misinformation drown out the real issues affecting our lives. So before I wrap up, I want to remind everyone that while we're discussing the science and the misinformation around storms, the reality is Jamaica has only just begun picking up the pieces after Hurricane Melissa. The government of Jamaica has launched an official Hurricane Melissa relief website, supportjamaica.gov.jm. If you are moved to support the relief efforts with a cash donation, especially my non-Jamaican viewers, please visit that website. It's the official government portal. It's a trusted channel that links directly to ODPEM, or National Disaster Agency. 
I mentioned this two videos ago, but I am repeating it here because while no one knows exactly how long the process will take, recovery will not happen overnight or over a few months. Recovery will probably be ongoing for a few years and every dollar given counts and makes a difference. No donation is too small. The link is in the, the video description and as always, thanks for watching. Please take care.